Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Taking Back You Momcast. Hi, guys. How you doing? It's Danny Carter Iddens, your host this week and every single week. And this week is a very special episode. It's a little bit out of the norm of what we do, but then again, it's also not. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so this week we are being joined by Cindy Hicks. She is a accessories designer and creator and the founder of Posh Lily's Millinery and Finery, which is an online clothing and accessory store that offers products to celebrate the unique beauty and spirit of women. But today, Cindy is going to be on to talk to us about the Vote Like a Girl initiative. So you see what I mean? It's a little bit different from usual, but a Then again, not so much. And the Vote Like a Girl initiative is a nonpartisan voting registration and information organization that makes sure women, you know, understand how important it is for them to vote on presidential elections and all the other elections in between. I'm so excited for Cindy to be here because she is just a great she's she's a wealth of information. And her and I have been talking back and forth for quite a while to prepare ourselves for this interview. But it's just, Cindy is just such a great wealth of knowledge and and she's so good to have on your side. So before we jump into the intro, I am going to just thank you. I'm going to thank you like I do every single week for being a part of the Taking Back You Momcast, for listening every single week and for supporting us. And you know, I ask you every week, I'm going to ask you today as well. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast and to share it, share it, share it with any mamas who you think would benefit from what we talk about each and every week. And, you know, my my little goal that I'm working on, or as my son's class would call it, their wildly important goal, their wig, be sure to rate and review the podcast so that we know what we're doing right and what we need to work on. Okay, I'll see you on the other side of the intro with Cindy. Coming to you straight from Indianapolis, aka the Circle City, this is the Taking Back You Momcast. The Taking Back You Momcast is a witty, authentic, and sometimes sarcastic podcast for millennial mamas who are in the thick of mom life. And I'm your host, Danny Carter Iddens, wife, millennial mama, motivational speaker, and motherhood advocate. Today, I am joined by Cindy Hicks, and she is an accessories designer and creator and founder of Posh Lilies Millinery and Finery, an online clothing and accessory store that provides products to celebrate the unique beauty and spirit of women. And today, she is going to talk to us about voting, you guys. She's going to use her platform to talk to us about voting and the work that she is doing to support the Vote Like a Girl initiative, which is a nonpartisan voting registration and information organization that helps women to understand how important it is that they vote on November 3rd and beyond. Cindy lives in my former hometown, Valpo, so she's a homegirl, and with her husband, Kevin, and their four children and two dogs. So you're just a little busy. You only have four kids and two dogs. It's fine, right? Yeah, just a little bit. But, so two kids went to college, and so now it's like I don't have to worry about them. I just have to make sure they have money in their lunch account. Right. I know. He's like, now they just want money. That's all. You know, I remember college. I was just like, is it time for me to get money? I want that time. Um, (laughs) So first of all, Cindy, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm really excited. I reached out to her and I said, hey, we need to do an episode about voting. And she was like, cool, I'm in. Let's do it. And and full disclosure, Cindy and I are friends um, and we are we both care deeply about voting issues for women and just how important it is that women vote in this election and in future elections because the presidential election is super important but there's also a lot of down ballot elections that we need to you know be taking part in and voting for as well so i had cindy on today she's gonna talk to us about this so cindy tell me a little bit about how you got involved with the vote like a girl initiative and you know just kind of what it means to you so I was thinking about that today, and it, it kind of has been coming for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved politics and elections and voting and, and all that stuff in high school and in college. And then life happened, and I kind of it's like, okay, well, yeah, I'll vote in the election, but I didn't follow it. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. Um, even in the last election, 
I didn't, I didn't, the last presidential election, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. I knew what I felt and I knew I was going to vote. But other than that, I kind of tried to stay out of it. Um, and then last year, uh, in our local election, I had a friend who was running for city council. I was really passionate about the mayoral election and I went to go vote and they turned me away. And I was like, what? How can I not vote for the mayor of my town? How can I not vote for the city council? Well, as it turns out, we live in the unincorporated part of our community. So we are not eligible to vote in city elections. And that got me fired up. Oh, I was oh, not very happy about that. Um, we live in a community where our school board, um, we couldn't vote for the school board. Our school board, our school superintendent is appointed by the mayor who we couldn't vote for. Um, can't vote for the city council in a community that, that I live in. Um, so that fired me up and that got me started. And then um, coming out of the Republican National Convention this year, uh, to be totally honest, I never thought I would have to think about a reality where I might not be able to vote anymore right. or where my vote might be minimized. Right. Um, took for granted that women won the right to vote 100 years ago, and I would never have to worry about that again. And the reality is that's not the case. Um, there are groups that are lobbying for all kinds of changes to voter rights, including um, household voting, which mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about making sure that no one can supersede my vote. But as I started getting involved, I realized how complicated voting rights are and even that not being able to vote in the, the election for our local mayor is all about voting rights. So that really just kind of led me to where I am today. Um, and back in, I guess it was probably July, July or August, um, I started the Vote Like a Girl initiative, um, raising funds for two nonpartisan organizations that focus on voter registration and nonpartisan um, election information and voter information. Uh, those two organizations are the League of Women Voters and Rock the Vote, because I'm Rock the Vote old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, those years, that many years old. <laughs> Rock the Vote old. Yes. Fine. That's yes. fine. I'm with you. I was there. I'm there too. <laughs> um, you know, that, that organization came along at a time when I was um, very passionate about voting. I, you know, I think Rock the Vote is probably where I, um, registered to vote for the very first time when I was 18 yes. was in a rock the vote uh, voter registration event. And in doing my research, you know, both of those organizations truly are nonpartisan. They really are focused on getting people registered to vote. Um, the League of Women Voters is really mm -hmm, also mm -hmm. very passionate about voting information and helping make it easy for you to find information on every candidate on your ballot personally. Um, so how did I, how did I figure out how to, what to do to support those organizations? I created a shirt that says voting like a girl since 1920. And we have been selling them online um, and at local events for about six weeks now. I have one. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do. And the response has been amazing. You know, it, it really has been a blessing to see the women in my circle express their passion for voting, but then also use that shirt as a way to start conversations about voting and voting rights and encouraging people to vote in the upcoming election. Yes, um, and and Cindy and I are a part of several organizations on Facebook that are leading that same way, League of you know Women Voters, um, and and just was it Monday? No, Tuesday was National Voter Registration Day, and so you know both of us were on Facebook, on social media, telling people to vote. And, you know, we're telling people to vote. Yes, but really we want you mamas, we want our mamas to vote because a lot of times we feel like, you know, our voices are kind of the last ones to be heard. 
especially, you know, when you have a, when you have a family and, and everybody's needs and wants need to be met, you know, it's hard to um, feel like what you have to say or what you think is important enough to, you know, kind of say it. And so voting is one of the best ways as, you know, as a mom to get your voice out there and what you can, you know, what you want, what you want for your children. Because just like Cindy said, and I understand why you would be hot you go up there, you can't vote for your mayor, you can't vote for school board. Well, what are we doing then? You know, um, because both of those, you know, positions are super important. And yes, the presidential election is very important. The, you know, entire mood of the country is very important. But, you know, when it gets right down to it, as moms, we need to know who's on our school, our kids' school board. We need to know who is, you know, running the city that we live in. We need to be to speaking on that and and taking our opportunity to you know vote for that when we can and it's those elections in between and that was something i think that i just kind of figured out in motherhood i mean i always voted for the president and i think that was you know as um it was instilled in me very young my grandma used to take me to like the voting polls with her and she wanted me to see her vote and she used to remind me that as a black woman, there was a time in the not so distant past that I would not have been able to do this. Because the interesting thing about, you know, women's suffrage is that it didn't necessarily mean black women's suffrage. And so she would, she told me, you know, um, you, every presidential election, you vote. I, or like, and now she's been gone for five years, but I feel like if I don't vote, she'll come back and kick my butt still. Um, so, but I didn't necessarily know the importance of the, you know, kind of the primaries and the, you know, um, senatorial elections or the mayoral elections or anything like that. I was just kind of like, okay, well, you know, I'll vote for the president. Um, Or I didn't care about school board until my kid was in school. And then I was like, oh, wait, who are these people? But you know what I mean? I think that's important for all of us mamas to keep in mind. Absolutely. The reality is, and much like you, myself and a lot of other women skip those in between elections because you have a million excuses you don't have time you don't know any of the people you just don't think it's a big deal but the reality is those in between elections have way way greater consequence for your daily life you know even at your state level Mm -hmm. your state level representative or your whatever, um, those have such a big impact on your daily life and on the daily lives of the people that you care for um, in your community and in your family. So it's really important on in those elections, especially to get out and vote. Uh, Like I, in what I've learned over the last month and a half, even the the judge electing judges. I mean, mm-hmm. I can remember, <laughs> I can remember a lot of years where I'm like, I don't know. I mean, that judge is fine with me, I guess. I, I don't know who that is and I don't know what they think or what they stand for. Um, but the reality is the judges that you vote for in your local community have a huge impact on your daily life. Mm-hmm. They do. And, um, and I think it's funny, we were talking, I was talking with, uh, I'm, I'm (laughs) in a strange twist of fate. Somehow I ended up being the, um, kind of like women's voting captain for Lawrence Township here in Marion County, because I'm in Indy now, which most people know, but just in case they didn't know. Um, And so we've been talking about just the whole idea that when you look at a ballot, and it says the the whole judges, you know, should so and so be retained? The it, the even the wording is super confusing, so it makes you kind of like not care because you're just like, ah, yeah, cool, I guess be retained. I don't know who is this, you know. And so one of the biggest things that we've been doing is we've been sharing with the women in the group just who are these judges? Here's information about these people. Um, when. Now, and when you say whether or not they should be retained, that's not necessarily a yes or no vote, but if there are enough people who are saying they should not be retained, then that kind of starts another process and another ball 
rolling. Um, but even that is kind of confusing. And, and how many times, too, have you looked at a ballot and they said, you know, do you vote yes or no on removing the da da da? And so it's like they got the double negatives in there. So you're sitting there going, okay, wait a minute. Vote yes if I want to vote if I want no what you know <laughs> and all of those things create apathy because if you're gonna go vote and it's difficult and there's it's wordy and it's weird and a lot of times for us moms we just are like Ugh, I don't have time for this and because you got your kids with you a lot of times you do and I think this election will also be different where a, a lot of us are concerned about going to the polls in general, just because of, you know, everything that's going on with COVID. And so I think there's a lot of layers to it. There's the fact that we are moms and we feel like, you know, we have a thousand things going on all the time. Now we have to worry about being healthy, going to the, to the polls. And then when we finally get there, we look at the ballot and there's, it's a, it's worded weird. You know, there's weird, <laughs> there's weird things. Um, the information is not necessarily readily available to us before we go to vote. So there's so many things that are deterrents for us to even kind of feel like we need to put the energy into it. Yeah. And in the era of COVID yes. and pandemic life, there's so much noise mm -hmm. that it's, you almost have to work mm -hmm. to get information about your local candidates. Um, my husband and I didn't even know that there was a gubernatorial election yeah. in our state yeah. until six weeks ago. Yeah. And I met one of the candidates a couple weeks ago and I told my husband about it. And, and my husband was like, what? That we're reelecting a governor this yeah. year? How, mm -hmm. how did I not know that? Um, but it's because there's so much noise. And right now, any official who's in office is getting a lot of FaceTime. You know, mm -hmm. I have never watched so many live press conferences on Facebook in all of my days <laughs> as I do now, yeah. just so I know where I have, you know, do I wear a mask here? What stage is my state in? All that stuff. I've never seen and watched a governor in my state as much as I have this year. And it's because of COVID, but it also makes it that much more challenging mm -hmm. for the opposing candidate to get FaceTime and mm -hmm. to get their message out there. You kind of have to work at it, which is just a whole nother reason why moms don't want to do it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's another thing to do. And, and one of the biggest things on, you know, um, when I do the show and when I go out and do speaking engagements, my biggest thing is I never want to give moms homework because I'm like, Lord, we have enough things to do. And I, cause I, sometimes I go to, um, you know, conferences or conventions or whatever. And they're like, Oh, we're so glad you're here. Okay. Here's what you need to do for the next three. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it. Just so you know, <laughs> like I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to do it. And, and really that's, you know, it's because we have so much, Oh, there's stuff going on. Like we just like, like, don't, please don't give me homework. Please don't give me homework. And so you're right that it, the, there's so much noise and there's so many conflicting, um, you know, perspectives and arguments. Some of them are honest. Some of them are not and that it's hard to suss out the truth and it's hard to suss out the, um, what what you what you should even be listening to, even be bothering with, and and to and to you know spend your time on. To be honest with you, I was in the same boat as you. I think maybe I had a couple weeks on you. I knew about two months ago that we were you know we had we were voting for our governor as well. Um, but I mean, and even then, I was I had like a you know like an old crap moment because I was like, who are these people? I don't even know. I know him because he's the governor already. But who are the rest of these people? And so, and, and you know, and, and information is not necessarily readily available. You have to kind of piecemeal it, um, you know, and, and Facebook, I, I, I talk about this all the time. I want to believe that in the beginning of Facebook's time, it was about, you know, communicating and people sharing and, and, and friendships. I'm going to tell myself that because positivity, um, but Facebook now can present, you know, uh, your reality but it, that's not necessarily the reality. And so uh, it's hard because you might look on Facebook and you will see something totally different than I will see on Facebook based on the 
choices that I make in, you know, pages that I like, searches that I do. So that's why it becomes really difficult where you can kind of get put in kind of like a niche almost of what you think. And then what ends up happening is all Facebook does is show you like-minded things. It shows you all the things that you already know you like. And that's great. But the problem is, is that there are other things out in the world, my friends. Um, and so that's, that's the struggle that I've been having is just making sure I step outside of my box and learn about other, you know, candidates, learn about other things that are going on in my state. Because I know about the stuff I know about, but now it's time to, I need to educate myself on things that I may not have necessarily been up on. And there are some things that will really surprise you. Um, just to be honest. Yes. And I actually have a great resource that um, I would, I recommend anybody use. I believe it's, it's a national resource. So any listener in any part of the country can use this. It's called ballotpedia.org. Yes. And you actually go in and you put your, you enter your address information. You don't have to give email if you don't want to it's an option you don't have to tell them who you are you enter your address and it pops up the ballot for your polling station basically it's that personalized and you can see all the candidates and then it also allows you to click further on the candidate and get all kinds of information you know judges it allows you to see their voting record um, mm -hmm. and how and their findings it allows you to see um, the chain, their career progression, all of that stuff, which is invaluable. And I mean, it's one place to get the information for all of the different elections that you can vote on in your community and on your ballot. And it makes it so easy. Yes. And I will put the link to that in the notes for this episode because, yes, I have been on Ballotpedia for uh, just like every we, – I've been searching it because Indiana has not put out its um, information on all the candidates yet. And that's the other fun thing. Um, it's basically, I think October 1st is when they said, but which is crazy because the last day to register to vote is October 5th. Um, so it's kind of like, okay, you guys are cutting, you know, putting that down to the wire. But anyways, that's why I wanted Cindy to come on today because we, we both live in the state of Indiana. And so for the state of Indiana, the final day to register to vote is October 5th, but for every state it's different. Um, and so, you know, we want to encourage you to go and I know you can go on vote.org you can see if you are registered to vote. You can find out if you're not registered to vote. You can get registered to vote. There are, um, I, and I believe Ivy Tech, if you're in Indiana, Ivy Tech is having voter registration literally on their campuses. Like there are a ton of different opportunities all over the country. We know about Indiana, obviously, because we live in Indiana, but please go to vote.org and find out. And there's even a vote.org and slash am I registered to vote like it's super you know um because you, uh, sometimes we think like oh I'm registered to vote but we moved so in, in like like Cindy's situation back when um we lived in Valpo we moved across the street from where we were but in moving across the street we moved from unincorporated Valpo to Valpo proper, I guess. And so just because we literally, I could probably still see my old house from my new house, but because we moved across the street, that totally changed our, where, where we voted, how we, everything. And so don't just think like, oh, we still live in the same town. We've lived in the same town for a thousand years. We just moved, you know, two houses, down, whatever. Don't take it for granted. Double check where, you know, if you are registered, and then figure out your polling locations. And because it is such a crazy year, figure out how to vote early. Um, if you can help it, don't wait until November 3rd. Jim and I, my husband Jim, we are tag teaming it. Um, so, because we don't want to take our son to the polls, to be quite honest, you know, because of COVID. So we're tag teaming it where I'm going to go vote come home. He's going to go <laughs> like, we, you know, but have a plan. Like, and I can't believe I'm saying this because I feel like, you know, when we were in school and they were like, have a plan for, you know, if there's a fire emergency or something in your home, 
<laughs> I feel like we need to have a plan for how we're going to vote. Um, because it is, it is so important that we don't just get up on November 3rd and be like, oh, here we go. Um, because yes, that is the election day, but, um, we don't want a situation where you are not able to vote. Cause like, like Cindy says, what if you roll up and you think like, oh, here I go. And they're like, no, you don't. And so if you plan ahead, you would know, you would know all this before you got to election day and you could figure out what to do about it. Right. So um, an important part of that is that Indiana and a lot of other states have inactive voter laws mm -hmm. where so in Indiana, if you have not voted in the last four years, they remove you from the mm -hmm. voter registration. So that's a great example of a voting law that directly affects voter rights. And somebody who maybe was disenfranchised and didn't care last time and life has changed significantly. They didn't vote in the last presidential election. They just don't vote. They don't, it's not an important thing to them. But this year they feel like, yes, I need to go vote. Again, they could walk up to the polls on election day and not, not be registered because they were removed from the registration. Um, another one that I've really learned a lot about is college students. So yeah. are college students registered locally because I'm their mom? Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And I'm so passionate about it. I was like, you have to go register. Like you turned 18 before you go to school, you have to go register. Well, they need to request absentee ballots. Mm -hmm. You know, my son is on a campus that doesn't allow, they are asking the students to stay on campus. They're not supposed to travel. So he technically would be violating school policy to come home to vote. Yeah. So yeah. he needs to request an absentee ballot. And I, you know, I was like, okay, well, if you need to Zoom with me yeah, well. while you request this absentee ballot, if you need help, whatever you need, let me know But they need to do, you know, so he, that's not the only, um, I know we're not the only house that has to deal with that. And it's, you just don't think about it, right. um, but they can also register on their campus. So if they, um, if you have a college student who didn't register before they left home, they can absolutely register and vote on their local campus as well. And then they can take advantage of all of the early voting opportunities and that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, when it comes to absentee ballots, so you at Indiana law absolutely allows for you to carry your absentee ballot and present it to the voting office in your community. Um, you know, I know everybody's so freaked out about the mail. Um, and in my business, I send stuff all over the country every day of the week, except Sunday because they won't come get it. Um, <laughs> they only do that for Amazon and I can't get the Amazon guy right, to take girl, it. Girl, why you can't get that Amazon hookup? No, no. <laughs> what I can tell you is the mail is moving just fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially for people in the state of Indiana. I mail stuff within the state all the time i probably on the day on a daily basis i mail something from valparaiso to someone in the state of indiana um because we are weird northwest indiana all of our mail has to go all the way to chicago mm -hmm. before it moves into the postal system that's our regional hub and all of my customers are getting their shipments regular standard mail within like three days if they're on the extreme downstate. So I know everybody's freaked out about the mail, but it's really not as bad as it seems. If you, that's the only way you have to get your absentee ballot in, do it. Yeah, yeah, do it. Uh, and I will say, it's really funny you should say that the mail route, because my grandma worked for the uh, like United States Postal Service in Chicago for um. 20, I think like 25 years. And so when I decided to go to Valparaiso University a thousand years ago, she still remembered the number. She's like, oh, they're da 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 da. And she said that. And I was like, whoa. And she was like, yeah, all the mail from there would have to come to Chicago. And then I remember thinking, even at 17, being like, that's in, that's super inefficient. But okay. Because <laughs> even what we, the joke is, and, and Jim and I used to laugh about this, is we could send, if you send a piece of mail to someone in like, 
like Chesterton, it'll go straight to them. But if you want to send it to a, a, a piece of mail to someone in Michigan City, it goes to Chicago and then comes to Michigan City. I'm like, why don't we just drive to Michigan City and hand it to them? <laughs> but yeah, no. The, so, but the mail we've been having, we had one week where we had no mail for the entire week, and that was weird. Um, but other than that, it, that seemed that little snafu seems to have been handled. We even got something in the mail from the United States Postal Service that told us, like, you know, if you want to do absentee vote, you need to request it, request it by this date. So they are, you know, up on when we need to, when, they're telling people when they need to do things. So th don't worry about the mail. Don't freak out about the mail. It is not, um, it's not as big of a issue as it's being presented to be. Um, and, and, I've been one of those people that Cindy has sent me a package. She sent it. I think you sent it on a, probably a Monday and I got it on a Wednesday. Like everything was fine. We're all good. Um, so don't worry about that, please. And, and, and if you are, and if it is something that super scares you, you have your absentee ballot, you can take your completed absentee ballot to your voting location, hand it to them and then go on about your business. If that's just something that like, bothers you and you're just like I don't want to mail it that is completely within your right to do the only thing you can't do obviously is vote again but yes you can hand it to them and say here's my absentee ballot and then you can go um so don't think that that's not a thing because I think some people are worried about that now they think that that's going to be misconstrued as them trying to vote twice no that's how it's always been you've always been able to do that and I think that's probably what we're going to end with today is just that you know, a lot of, like Cindy calls it, and I like how she calls it, she calls it noise. A lot of the stuff is noise. And so, you know, you have to remember, we've been voting for a long time. Like America has been having elections for a long time. And whether you're a woman or not, that is the truth. We've been having elections for a long time. And the process works. It really, really does. And, you know, sometimes... Um, different facets of the process get pointed out and you know it can be confusing because it makes you think like oh I don't need I, oh wait this doesn't matter I don't matter when I do this but that's not, you know the process works and so please 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 do your due, due diligence and you know take 10 minutes get on your phone do like a little bit of research figure out who's on your ballot figure out who those people are um and there's another, and here's another resource that I want to give you guys that I use every year because I find that it changes every single year. Isidewith.com. So sometimes we sit there and we go, I don't even know who I, what? I don't even know what I think, you know, or, or you, you kind of don't even know where you, where you land on certain issues. So Isidewith.com is really cool because it asks you a series of questions about today, today's like political really political, environmental, all sorts of issues that are health issues, all these things. And then it kind of tells you where you line up um, with certain political parties, certain candidates. And it's not to say that once you get that candidate listing, you just go, okay, I vote for him or I vote for her or whatever. But what it is to say is now you kind of know where to start for research purposes where you can say, okay, well, let me see if this person is who I line up with or you look at me go well I mean yeah there's one thing but the rest of the he's crazy so I gotta go over here or whatever um so I, I'll put the link to that in the um episode notes as well so yeah that's a great resource I I did it and I I, I side with a party that I've never heard of yeah me too <laughs> I got some crazy we probably got the same party if I know us we, we probably, probably did <laughs> You're like, who this? Yeah, because then I had to look it up. I was like, who's this? I never heard of that before. Um, but then I was reading. I was like, yeah, that's right. I guess I'm just not okay. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. Uh, I feel like there's some other things happening that are being brought up now as far as parties are concerned. But it is no, that's a whole other story for another day. Yes, that is a whole other discussion, but now I know I don't need to start my own political party because there is one that I actually agree with. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, oh, okay, here are my people. So listeners, you guys know that uh, before we end every show, I always like to ask my guests to share one either silly, fun, or just kind of random thing about them that we wouldn't necessarily know by looking at them. And um, Cindy's thing is near and dear to my heart. She is a, she loves to salsa dance and drink tequila. And this is, 
<laughs> and this is the direct quote, which is why I love Cindy. She said, when I drink tequila, it makes me think I am a white girl salsa queen. And I just thought that was the best thing that I, because you know what? Sometimes you just get in that and you're just there and you're feeling it and maybe no one else is, but who really cares? Because you are doing you. So tell me about this transformative experience that you have. <laughs> Oh my, well, there, there are lots of really good stories. Um, <laughs> one of my, so I um, worked in diversity marketing for years and was adopted by um, my Hispanic team. And so they were the ones that started this, that, so it's totally their fault. But about <laughs> three years ago, um, my husband was on an incentive trip with his company and his boss and, you know, two or three upline bosses all said, Hey, let's go. It was in Miami, which I'm like, that, you know, it's Here my place, right? Yeah, let's do that. So <laughs> they said, Hey, let's meet at this club in Miami. And it was in full disclosure. It was a bunch of white people and like <laughs> maybe one brown person and the club was, it was like my heaven. Cause it was full on, Latino, Hispanic, yes. great mix of people, yes. incredible live music. And here I am in front of all of these people that my husband works with who I really don't know. And That's I'm just it. like <laughs> letting my salsa flag fly. I'm like, and, you know, and I'm like, here, have another drink. You should come dance with me. <laughs> <laughs> you loosen you up. <laughs> I bet you're. Yes. No, I agree. You know, listen, I, um, I'm there. Well, I mean, I'm a dancer, so I'm there for dancing anytime, anywhere. Um, and probably one of the most fun things for me is to learn, you know, different types of dance from other, you know, cultures. Cause like, I mean, that's amazing. And, Cause that's, and it's an international language. Like we all get like when it's time to get down, like everybody understands that it doesn't matter what language you speak. Um, and so, yes, and, and and especially for people in our generation, we have the salsa. Um, remember the salsa craze of the early mm -hmm. of the late nineties, early two thousands. It was oh, a yeah. wonderful time. I was at my thinnest um, because all we did, all the music was literally like a banger. Like you just couldn't help, and so you're just dancing like all day. But anyways, um, you know, I, I appreciate it. I love that, and I and just the the fact that you know you you're like hey i'm in miami what else am i gonna do you know <laughs> and to, i should also say that i am not a dancer that's okay. um i am incredibly uncoordinated i have to have a certain amount of tequila before yeah. i get rhythm yeah and then once there's too much tequila i lose it so there's like um, a balance that like yeah a, there's a, a balance spot. there's a sweet spot that's yes. Fair. That's fair. Um, so that makes it even more entertaining because, you know, <laughs> Who knows? I'm not necessarily good at it, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Who knows what people are seeing, but that's okay. It's not your problem. That's you right. If they're laughing at me, they're not laughing at somebody else, and there I can go. take it. There you go. Um, and, and that's funny because last week's episode was about other people's opinions, and so Cindy's just not even worried about it. She's just like, you know what? I'm going to do me. And laugh at me, whatever. I don't care because I'm because you were having fun. Really, at the end of the day, you're the one who. Oh my fun. gosh, I had a great time, and yeah. we got burritos afterwards. So. Oh well, that's like the best night ever. Um, as far as I'm, any night where there's a burrito in in some way, shape, or form involved, I, that's that's a great night on my in my book. Um, yes. So especially as someone who used to live in San Diego, my the. I spent my entire, the rest of my life since I moved back to Indiana, trying to find even halfway decent Mexican food that, you know, close to what I ate in San Diego every day of my life. Um, and so one day I'll end up back in San Diego and I'll just eat all the, <laughs> I'll just eat and eat and eat all the Mexican food. But you know, that day's not here right now. I have work to do here in Indiana, but oh well. All right, Cindy. Well, I am going to wrap the show up today, but because you and I could talk all day, we honestly could. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm. I actually want to, and Cindy doesn't know this. I do this all the time to my guests, so she's probably going to be like, "What?" Um, I want to have Cindy back on uh, in probably a couple months because Cindy is an amazing goal setter, 
Um, she has like this entire system and process and I need her to share it with me and all of her listeners. I've seen part of it and I've, um, I've been like, yes, we need this. We need to hear all about this. So I would love Cindy, I'd love for you to come back and, and share that, um, kind of your process for that because she's a very successful woman. And so we should listen to her. Um, and so I, I'd love for you to come back if you would, if you'd be willing. Oh, I'd love to. And okay. I love to talk about goals. Yes. Um, and make goal pictures and all kinds of stuff. Just don't tell my kids. Okay, they hate I, when I start talking about it because then they're like, oh God, she's going to make us do it again. Well, you know what? They'll be very, it's one of those things they'll appreciate it when they get older. Yes. <laughs> so Yes, they will sometimes. Yes. So, all right, guys, if you want to learn more about Cindy and Posh Lilies, which is, we, we, you know, we didn't even talk about that today, but I'm going to send you to facebook.com slash posh, posh lilies. You can go there and you can see all of her amazing designs. She has a lot of, she has a lot of great things and you used to live in Kentucky. And so kind of what started, you started out doing like, um, like fascinators, right? Hat, derby hats and fascinators yes. were that's really where it started because I went to the derby every year and yes. um, the hat and it cost a, like a million dollars for great hats so I started making my own and then I moved here and I started making them and selling them and that was really where Posh Lily started but then COVID happened yeah. and nobody goes to events so I had to had start to so I had to start making shirts and masks and all kinds of stuff. Um, I do have some men's menswear stuff too, but um, yeah, people stopped dressing up fancy. So I had yeah. to find a new way to keep the business going. Yes. And, and you know what, all, I think a lot of us can, uh, we can relate. So um, that's why another reason why I want you to come on is I want to hear how you did this, the switch up. Um, and you made, you kept it going and you're still, you're still rocking it. So I'm super proud of you because yes, that was not easy the day that, you know, a, a lot of us realized, Oh, we can't, we got to do something else now. Okay. All right. You know, and you take a minute and then you make it happen, which is probably where those goals came in. Would be yeah. Favorite. Well, yeah. you know, th probably three quarters of my annual business happens traditionally from yeah. March to June. Yeah. So, so that was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like nobody, nobody was having weddings. Nobody yeah. was. And so suddenly people, t-shirts became finery in their fancy clothes. So yep. I started making t-shirts. Girl, I can wear a t-shirt at home watching Netflix. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to do just a little bit of a uh, outro for you that you're going to hear right after we get done with this. And I hope you guys have a great West rest. Ugh, what great rest of your week. Cindy, thank you so much for joining us today. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Thanks for having me. All right. No problem. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm so excited. Isn't she fantastic? And you know what? Uh, she's even better in person. She's she's such a wonderful, a wonderful woman and a strong woman, a knowledgeable woman. And she's just everything that I really believe encompasses what we are and what we do here at Taking Back You. I am always thrilled to have moms on, um, you know, because we, we, we are awesome. Um, and, and so I'm always thrilled to have on moms who, who know their stuff and who are really interested in supporting and empowering other mothers. So, like I said at the end of the episode, I'm going to put all the links, and there are a lot of them. There's a lot of information this episode. All the links in the notes, um, in the notes for this episode, so that you can go back, you can check those out. I will also include links to her um, website, to Posh Lilies, so you can check out all her amazingly adorable and uh, girl powery. She has some, some. She has a little bit of everything, uh, things that she offers in her Etsy store. And you know, I just hope that you are having a great week. The weather has turned here. It is now cold, but that's okay. That's what sweaters are for. So like I said last week, I'm still there at Sweater Wapa. Okay, so we are in fall and we are, fall is in full swing. Have you checked out the Taking Back You apparel, you know, online apparel store? Um, we don't just have apparel. We also have cool swag and stuff like that. But I already have somebody who went on and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to get that. So check it out. Or if you happen to be a man who's listening to the show, check it out for your wife. I don't know, whatever. If, she, if she's a mom, she might want some stuff. Like I said at the beginning, don't forget to subscribe 
subscribe and share. I am so glad you're here next week. It's going to be me again by myself. All right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. For more information on Taking Back You and the Taking Back You Momcast, visit us at takingbackyou.com. From there, you'll be able to follow us on social media, listen to past episodes, and learn all about the mission of Taking Back You. Be sure to subscribe to get future episodes. And from all of us at Taking Back You, thank you so much for your support.